Foucher and hello to Keith's Whiskey Vlog. My name is Keith aka Whiskey Tour Guide Keith. Now in this video we're going to do a little tasting for you. Whiskey tasting review. Now and again it's been mentioned that I'm not the most expressive. Um, just in case you don't know I am very excited to try this. And usually for me it is not a single malt that we're going to be tasting today. It's a blended malt. It's a mixture of different single malts and it comes from Loch Fine Whiskies, which is a little whisky shop in Inverary, a village over on the west coast of Scotland. Lovely little village, great place to visit. Two whisky shops in the small village on the main street, but this one comes from Loch Fine Whiskies. Great range of whiskies, uh, really knowledgeable, attentive staff. They will point you in the right direction, but what they also do is they bottle their own blend from a living cask. They actually have two living casks and if you're not familiar with the concept, it's similar to uh, the Infinity Bottle. Check out my Infinity Bottle videos. Or if you're not familiar with Infinity Bottles, it's similar. It's a similar concept to the sort of Celera vatting that they do in Sherry. And in short, you get a barrel, you fill it with, in this case, whiskey, you start to drink it, it goes down, when it gets to a certain level, you top it up again, it fills up. So you've always got that core expression, your initial fill, but it diminishes each time, and then you can top it up and you can change the character, change the flavour, change the profile as you go. So it slowly evolves and morphs over time. So they have two living casks, and this one, because I am me, is um, it's the 1745 cask, so-called, and it is all Isla single malts, exclusively Isla single malts that they, they pour in and marry together. So it's a bourbon cask that they use. It comes from an old concept, um, sort of long forgotten tradition in Scotland, where people would have a barrel or a cask in their house, and when you went to visit, you would take some of your own grog, you'd pour it in, and then you'd help yourself to the barrel. So it would just be constantly topping up. There wouldn't be much skill or much finesse to it, but it would be alcohol, and you would keep a, a good supply. So this, there's a little bit more to it. A lot of fine whiskies obviously are um, much more skillful than the, the good old days when you would just top it up. And they um, decide what they want to add every time they need to fill it up. I think this is around about, or maybe the other the other living cast, there's two living casts, there's one that's sort of normal whiskies, Speysides, Highlands, and it's around about batch 10, I'm not sure which number of batch this is, but uh, this is the 1745. The village of Inverary was built, it was established in 1745. There's a little bit more to the story than that. Inver, uh, if you see Inver in a place name, it comes from Gaelic. Now in Scotland we speak English primarily, but Gaelic was once spoken all over Scotland and the word Inver in Gaelic means the mouth of a river, basically where a river empties into another body of water confluence, but usually a river mouth. So the mouth of the river Airy, Inver Airy, is where the village was, at the mouth of the river. The big landowner, Inverary is in an area called Argyll. The landowner is the Duke of Argyll. Now, the Duke in the 1700s came along and built himself a big fancy new castle, beautiful castle. You can still go and visit there to this day. The current, present Duke lives in Inverary Castle. So the Duke at the time built this lovely big castle, looked out his window, saw the village and thought it spoils his view. So rather than just get rid of them, he built a new village around the corner out of the way and got rid of the old village and built some nice gardens and a lawn. So 1745 is when he built the new village for the people of Inverary. So benevolent dictator, I suppose you could say. Anyway, we'll get uh, a little look at the, the bottle for you. Now, as well as having their shop in Inverary, they have another shop in Edinburgh. If you're ever in Edinburgh, Coburn Street, just in the just off the, the Royal Mile in the old town. Um, I'll read you the bottle as normal. Now I can't remember where I've got, I've got it in my head that the initial mix 
the, the, the initial vatting of these, uh, the living cast, the whiskies they put in were all a minimum 18 year old from selected Isla distilleries. Um, you'd have to double check that, but I've got it in my head somewhere that that's the, uh, the case. So on the, the box, the Loch Fine in Bunnery, Scotland. On the shores of Loch Fine in the pretty fishing town of Inverary is a great whisky store founded back in 1993. This is our home, the home of the Loch Fine, a brand that has evolved through constant dialogue with our customers and visitors to the west coast of Scotland. The range encompasses Scotch blends and malts, Scotch liqueurs and a botanical gin. Each expression of the Loch Fine is original, having been conceived at our Lochside home, and each is dedicated to our customers who tell us what they like. Encapsulated in this package is a small piece of what captures the hearts and minds of our customers. We hope it captures you and that you will come and visit us at our home or at the very least go online at www.lochfinewhiskies.com. So, a little bit about the shop, nothing too specific about the bottle, obviously, on there. A um, little image there of the shop on the back of the box. Nice little box, embossed on the side there, the Loch Fine, both sides. Feels good. Right, so the Living Cast. Uh, now, the, my only minor, minor gripe with this is it's called the Loch Fine the living cask there's at least one too many the in use there anyway shouldn't affect the taste the loch fine in very scotland the living cask blended malt scotch whiskey 1745 bottled in scotland for loch fine whiskies 43.6 abv 50 cl it's about a smaller bottle this one cost me 75 pounds it's usually about that. You can maybe get it a little bit cheaper if you order from them online. But with something like this, the anticipation, I don't really care about the price or even that it's a slightly smaller bottle. The bottles, it does say, are handmade. May have some imperfections. They look perfectly fine to me. It's an unusual shape. Um, what's this? Cuboid, oblong, rectangular. In the beginning, the living cask was filled with a combination of the finest single malts that we could source, which is a high claim. Um, these formed a happy marriage, as you would expect. Uh, where are we? As the living cask depletes, we replenish it with different whiskies, taking care to balance new fill with existing content. Thereby, we make subtle and interesting changes as we go along. Like every marriage, the relationship matures and improves with age. And what we have here is something that offers the Scotch malt drinker something truly different. So yes, I don't know what my good lady wife would say about that. Like every marriage, the relationship matures and improves with age. Hmm, okay. Become a bit more tolerant and a, a little bit hey, <laughs> more forgiving, I suppose. Anyway, so that's really about it, apart from your, your tax and your uh, alcoholic unit. So... Yes, the living cask, uh, constantly evolving blend of the finest single malts. Now, um, they were quite highly rated. One of the sort of more well-known Scotch or Scottish whisky connoisseurs, a man called Jim Murray, and he got a, he's got a really nice quote. He says it's uh, one of the best whiskies ever created at quarter to six in the evening. 1745. He's a funny man. He's almost as funny as me. He must be a dad. A definite sort of dad joke. Oh, oh, so excited to get into this. Right, so. Oh, trusty chip comes out. It's not required to get through the paper here, but we're going to do it nice and clean anyway. He slices his hand open. <coughs> Now, for anyone that knows me watching, you can lick your lips because I'm really looking forward to sharing this with people as well. But obviously, only after I've had some. So, 
So at first, 1745, I was thinking there was a rather large event took place in 1745, known as the 45. It was the last Jacobite uprising in Scotland when uh, a young Italian known as Bonnie Prince Charlie arrived in Scotland and started a, a bit of trouble. Quite successful, all went wrong, ran away again. But um, nothing to do with the 45. Smells lovely on the nose, quite malty, fresh. Uh, a little bit smoky, just it's just a tantalizing amount of smoke. Let's get some in the glass. Oh, tempted just to keep going with that, but we'll stop there. Right. Quite sweet on the nose, quick a bit gentler. Not not as much of the malt that I got off the, the nose in the bottle. It's funny how the, the, the shape of the glass changes what comes at you. A lot more delicate than I was expecting. It's not the richest of colours. You'd expect maybe with older malts, certainly maturing in a barrel, ongoing, may have more, more colour to it, but it is just a, a, an ex-bourbon barrel, so it's not got the sort of rich sherry coming off it. Sweet, a little bit of toffee, so maybe just a little bit of the oak. Not so, not so much wood though. Sweet, smoke, fresh. So, nowhere near as pungent and full and coming at me as I was expecting, but let's have a little taste. The malt coming through again, it was a barley cereal flavour, but all around that is the smoke. It's nowhere near as full and sort of full on, as in your face, as dirty as maybe an Ard Beg, or maybe a Kilhoman Macker Bay or your, your Laphroaig. It's not got any of the medicinal, none of that sort of hospital cleaner. Um, it's not on fire, it's been on fire. So you're talking sort of charred wood, sort of ash, soot, post-fire wood rather than burning. Definitely a lot sweeter on the nose. A little bit of honey. It's like a it's quite reminiscent of a Highland Park 12. It's like the, the very middle of it is the Highland Park 12, that sweet honey, but it's surrounded by much more charred wood, as I say, ash, soot, a little bit tar almost. It's quite interesting. It's quite, it's, I'd say it's very well balanced. And I, I don't usually go that way with my eyelids. I, I do like a, uh, just just that mouth feel that intense um, nothing nothing subtle but this is it's a lot more balanced a lot more subtle it's not lacking it's strong but it's very well balanced strong I think one of the tasting notes that I dread is coconut. I don't quite get coconut. Maybe burnt coconut, but I don't know how that would differ from other burnt wood, but I um, don't quite get that. That was intriguing me. I thought, oh, a little bit of coconut. Have you got, come to Scotland, all across um, the landscape, you'll see a sort of yellow bush, first half of the year, it's gorse, and when you go close up, 
Um, the flour does smell a little bit of coconut, but it's not unknown. It's not like you get coconuts in Scotland, but you do get coconut smell off the gorse. So we'll add a little bit of water. There's still that sweetness, still that honey sweetness, but burnt, burned out wood. I don't think this will need much water. I'm going to add two drops and I might add a little bit more, we'll see. It's a really nice whiskey. It's not got any of the sherry sweetness, it's not, it's not, it's not that rounded, it's not got that full depth, it's got beautiful balance. And it's not got any of the, sort of the plasticky, the, the medicinal, the iodine, the TCP, it's got none of that. Uh, none of what I usually call the sort of the, the, the burnt scrapings from the warehouse floor. Um, it's much, much, uh, much more well to do. So two drops of water. That lightens it and it spreads out. It's much more on the floor of my mouth now. It's it's. It's like the same flavours but in a different place and therefore different flavours. So yeah, there, there's nowhere near as much of the burnt wood up here but it's much flatter across the bottom. Nice and warm. It's lovely. So you've got your sort of heathery, honey sweetness, a little bit lemony and then you've got your burnt wood, ash, soup, a bit coal, almost you could say. Lovely whiskey. I think I've pretty much summed up how it is for me. When I bought this, there were two of us in the shop. The other gentleman, when he saw me buy this, thought, I'll have one of those, went to buy it. And they didn't have any left in the shop. I think they are still available online. So if you are looking for one, don't hang about. I would recommend it. If you like your Isla whiskies, I think it's really based on um, the type of customer they get in the shop heading to Isla through the west of Scotland on the way down to get the ferry across to Isla. So people who like Isla whiskies are going to love this. Very interesting whiskey, very nice. Um, highly recommend. Hopefully you enjoyed my little tasting review and some of the, the wider information. As I say, I've got a couple of videos um, to do with my Infinity Bottle. A uh, similar sort of concept, much less sophisticated the way I do it, I'm sure, than the guys in Loch Fine Whiskies. But uh, check out those videos um, if you like this idea. At the end of my tasting videos, I do like to recommend um, similar whiskies. I mentioned the Highland Park 12. So maybe something a little bit older, the Highland Park 12, maybe the Highland Park 18, something like that for a bit more extra richness, a bit more sophistication I suppose. Um, you're also looking at probably the Lagavulin 16, so that's bourbon matured, it's the sort of special occasion whiskey. So yeah, there you go, your, your three whiskies, your Highland Park 12, Highland Park 18, Lagavulin 16 three in the same sort of area as the Living Cask 1745. That is me for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Check it out. Check out my other videos as well. Pour yourself a dram, drink whiskey. But for now, cheers. Slendjabath.